Wrestling fans, are you ready? Yes! 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 For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Now, please welcome at this time your hosts, Graham, GSM Matthews, and RJ Marceau. You're listening to the next era of wrestling radio. This is Wrestle Rant Radio. Wrestle Rant Radio for Thursday, August 1st, 2024, although we are recording this on Wednesday, July 31st before Dynamite. So although we're not getting to Dynamite, which we typically don't anyway, we do have some breaking news thoughts on the Shane McMahon story from earlier today that we'll get into, obviously, in addition to the SummerSlam predictions for Saturday, which I will be in attendance for alongside Alexis in Cleveland, which we're looking forward to that. Uh, before then, though, new episodes of Wrestle Rant Radio available every single Thursday, WrestleRant.com, WrestleRantRadio.com, all your favorite podcast platforms. Rate the show, review the show, subscribe to the show. Never miss a new episode every single Thursday. Mr. Marsober, though, what's going on? Are you looking forward to SummerSlam on Saturday? I'm doing good. Yeah, I'm pumped. I can't wait for Saturday. Where does SummerSlam stand as far as, like, your 20-plus years of fandom, as far as, like, favorite shows, any, like, memories? Obviously, we've been to SummerSlam a bunch, so Nashville, Detroit was great, too, but Nashville specifically was an awesome time. Uh, we were there for SummerSlam 2015 as well. You drove even further than I did for that show, from Mass to Brooklyn. So we, we've got our fair share of SummerSlam memories. Yeah, I mean, the original show, my first show was 2002, which was a great show overall. Um, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, um, Brock and Rock, Rock on that Brock show. Brock and yeah. Rock. I mean, Rey Mysterio versus Kurt Angle, just a great show. Like I said, throughout the years, even like Cena, and Batista, Cena and Edge. Um, I feel like they just had a, ton, a lot of good shows, and it was always like kind of seen as like the WrestleMania of the summer, just because it was pretty much halfway through the WWE year, and kind of always got like the ending of good storylines. So I, I mean. I used to going to Nashville was a ton of fun. Going to Detroit last year was a ton of fun. Um, we went to Brooklyn. That was just a fucking long ass ride. Realistically, holy <laughs> shit! But uh, no, I, I think SummerSlam's great, and I think this year's card should be pretty fun. I think I think it's got potential on paper, and uh, not only that as well, but I'm going to make you feel old by saying this. It, it's been nine years since that 2015 SummerSlam, which alone is crazy. But then you also have to consider it's been another nine years, and I'm forgot. I, I'm surprised you didn't mention this been another nine years from that point since you were at SummerSlam the first time in Boston at the TD Garden, right? Oh, my God. What was that? SummerSlam 05? 06, I think. Six. Yeah. 06, yeah. Yep. Thanks, kid. <laughs> Thanks for making me feel young. I was going to... I, 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 listen, I try. And uh, that is crazy. I was going to say we have something in common where SummerSlam was our first wwe pay-per-view summerslam 2015 was my first pay-per-view i'd ever been to i had been to a bunch of shows by that point but never a wwe pay-per-view because they didn't typically come to connecticut or the northeast a whole lot um so that was my first show summerslam 06 was not your first pay-per-view right it was armageddon 05 armageddon 05 was yeah uh, yeah that's a not a bad i mean the show itself i don't really remember beyond taker and orton but that's a pretty great main event for that show though yeah no it was awesome it was at the dug and donut center they stuffed the hell in a cell in there not sure how they did it but yeah, yeah. It's still the uh, Dunkin' Donut Center to me. It's not the Amica uh, yeah, Pavilion. Yeah, we'll fake name, whatever <laughs> Just stupid. Um, and no, we'll get into uh, SummerSlam momentarily. I got to ask you about this first before we go any farther, uh, any further here. This news broke earlier today from Fightful, from Wrestle Talk. There's been some talk about this for a little while now. Not that it would actually happen, but just the general idea of it. Because I think it was something that Conrad Thompson started. Um, speaking about like a rumor that he started, not intentionally, but like I think Jim Ross was asked about it too. And I'm talking about Shane McMahon in AEW. Now, I don't even think we discussed this on the show a month ago when this was first circulating in the news, wrestling headlines and stuff, because it was so egregious, so outlandish, so ridiculous that it was not even worth giving any attention to, any thought to, any effort into talking about. 
But this might honestly be a real thing because also around that point, someone asked Tony Khan in one of those conference calls or an interview, maybe promoting whatever show was at that point it was. And he asked, I've never talked to Shane. I've never had any communication with Shane, which may have been true at the time, but that was a month ago. Uh, a month later, there was a picture circulating this morning from WrestleTalk that to me looked completely staged. I mean, how does a picture like that get taken at a quote unquote private Arlington airport by a random AEW fan walking I mean, by? I mean, Tony was like hiding under the desk for Christ's sake. I mean, I don't know. The whole situation, I hate to wear the tinfoil hat and like play conspiracy theorists, but that to me looked completely staged as like, I don't know. Before I go any further, let me just get your thoughts on I Obviously, you saw the picture, so is it obviously the picture's real. It's not AI generated, but what are your thoughts on the whole situation? I guess my point, I mean, like I said, the picture is just, it's hilarious. Shane's staring right at the picture, and Tony's like, hands over his face trying to cover himself. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess my question is just like, why would, I, I just guess my question would be like, why would they want him? Like, it's like, it's not like Vince still owns WWE. Like, yeah, Triple H works there, but it's like they're owned by like a bigger company. It really isn't any like I don't want to see Shane in the ring again. Um, I guess like why would they want Shane? I guess that is the big question here. That's why I think I I think the picture was staged on purpose so it would go viral and so people would be. I mean, again, this was already discussed about a month ago, but people forgot about it because it didn't seem that realistic. Now it does seem more realistic now that they're actually meeting with each other because. I know Shane had spoke with Mercedes Monet at an airport. They had not intentionally met up. They just uh, kind of crossed paths. And Mercedes, you know, said that we'll see what happens in the future with Shane and AEW and blah, blah, blah. Um, that is the main question, though. What is really to be gained here from Shane McMahon meeting with Tony Khan, working with Tony Khan, working in AEW? Would you not think as a general rule, in your opinion, having a McMahon, any McMahon involved in your company is just a... Would that not be a negative thing? Because don't you think the McMahon name now, Vince, even Shane didn't do anything necessarily, but like even just the the mere mention of the name McMahon is mud right now. I know Triple H is technically a McMahon, but he doesn't, I don't know. Shane's a little bit farther removed. Don't you think that would be a negative for AEW, just that part of it alone, regardless of what he could bring to AEW? Yeah, like I said, I guess that's like why I said, why, like, why, why would you want him? It's not like, one, he shouldn't be wrestling, two... Like you said, it's the kind of like the names been kind of dragged through the dragged through the mud right now, um, with everything with Vince. But uh, I just don't really see any a ton of positives out of it. Like, like you said, maybe just stir up some some chatter. But besides that, I, I don't really know why you'd want to bring him in. I, I just I don't know. It's got to be, and I would hope. I, first of all, I hope nothing really comes out of it. Um, but if something were to come out of it, just because you mentioned what positive could he bring. I can't even sit here and play devil's advocate here. I, I honestly can't because um, I honestly don't really know what good he could bring because I know the narrative is like, oh, AEW needs a boost. They need like a, you know, a shot in the arm sort of thing. I get that. Is Shane McMahon really the answer to those problems though? Like I, I wouldn't yeah. think so. I don't know why he would be in the year of 2024 from a business standpoint. Even I'm not saying Tony Khan and AEW have it all figured out. They have it all together and whatever. But whatever issues they're dealing with, can they really be helped or fixed by Shane McMahon? Like, does he have contacts or contacts rather that can help them? I, I know AEW is on the verge of getting a pretty sweet TV deal. I would have to imagine. I know uh, TNT or uh, Warner rather they dropped uh, NBA. It's, it wasn't really them. It was more that uh, the NBA went to Amazon, it was right? US, it wasn't you, it's me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, essentially, is what it was. They went to Amazon, right? Isn't that who they're about to sign with? Amazon, NBC Universal, and ESPN. Wow, okay. So, they, do you think theoretically, I know this is kind of a side story in relation to the Shane stuff, and we talked about the TV stuff a while ago. Do you think because of that, AEW might get a larger TV deal? Not, I'm not saying NBA money, obviously, but I, I can't imagine that hurts AEW. Um, I mean, I guess it really depends on, like, yeah, obviously they'll have more money for the NBA, like, they'll have more money now, but it's like, how much money were they also making off the NBA? Like, I guess it kind of could be like a catch-22. Just because you're saving money on not having the license could also mean you're making less money overall. Because mm-hmm. um, I'm assuming based on what program you have, the better ad advertising you're getting, which you're getting more money. Obviously, the NBA, it's having like nationally broadcast games. You could probably make more money. Um, but, <sighs> yeah, I mean, I think, like you said, they have more money, but like maybe they want to distribute it differently. I know NASCAR is going to... 
they'll have a couple races on uh, Turner next year. Um, so that's something new that they're putting their money into. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, it just sounds like a dep- like, like you said, theoretically they should get more money, but it's just like if they, if just because they're losing the NBA doesn't mean they have like a boatload of money to spend. It's yeah. kind of like a, I don't know, I'm not big into business, so I just, I heard someone say that, like, yeah, even though they're losing them, doesn't mean, like, they're now obviously making less money, so it's like, are they going to give AEW more money if they're going to not make as much, like, I don't know, classic economics. Yeah. I mean, it's also possible, too, that Tony Khan could be waiting to sign said deal, a new deal with Warner to re-up Dynamite and whatever, until the NBA stuff is cleared up. I mean, they might he might be thinking, like, hey, I know you guys have some more money to spend here, so maybe if he waits it out, he can get a better deal. I, I, I don't think they're going anywhere at this point. I just think he might be waiting on purpose. Again, I'm not a business person either, but I've seen that theorized, and I could see that being the case. Yeah. No, I mean, I haven't heard too much news lately, but, I mean, I, I assume that they'll, they'll get something. Maybe uh, the name on the contract does say Shane, but it's Shane McMahon and not Shane Strickland or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. And maybe he's the newest member of the elite. Oh God. But seriously, back to the Shane thing for a minute. I, I just I, I really don't know. Like, not even joking wise, I jo- genuinely do not know what positive they could bring he could bring to AEW by just working with them. Maybe behind the scenes and maybe it's one of those things where I'm skeptical and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'll I'll say it here if I end up getting proven wrong on this front, but um, I, I really just don't see what value he brings. And, and even from a business standpoint, if they're about to sign a pretty lucrative deal with uh, Warner, and I had seen the pictures, I mean, I haven't looked myself on Max, but apparently there's a lot of AEW content now up there. I don't know about in the States, but I know overseas there was, so that wasn't the case previously. If they can get the pay-per-views on Max, they'll be up and running pretty soon, so that, that would be a great step forward for the company. But even from especially, especially from an in-ring standpoint, Shane McMahon and AEW would be fucking disastrous. Like, not even for a cool pop of like, oh, Shane McMahon's an AEW. Like, oh, this is crazy. Never thought I would see the day. Like, that might have worked five years ago. But with the state that AEW's in right now, where they're kind of in rehab mode and to a certain extent, where they're cr- trying to build goodwill with the audience, do good matches, good storylines, get something going for themselves, I just feel like bringing in Shane in any capacity, honestly, would be a massive step backward, especially after the last five years that Shane has had from the evil authority figure run in 2019 that was just fucking terrible and it felt like it would never end to Raw Underground the following year to the Braun Strowman feud that served zero purpose in 2021 leading up to Mania because Braun ended up getting fired anyway, complete waste of a match on that card, the 2022 when he was in the Royal Rumble, one of the worst Rumbles I've ever seen. And then his awful swan song in Mania last year where he came out and, and tore his quad. I mean, it's been one disaster after another with this guy for the past five years. Which is, I hate to say it because I was sitting there on your dorm couch when he came back eight years ago. And I was super excited. I was freaking out because it was we hadn't seen him in WWE for a long time. But I feel like the uh, bloom is off the rose with Shane McMahon in wrestling at this point. Yeah, I agree. I, I said that I, when you asked me, it's kind of my first question. It's like, what, what, why would you bring him in? Because, like, what's the positive? Nah, I, I just don't see a positive. I, I really don't. I, I don't know how many people honestly do. And, uh, again, if I'm proven wrong and he ends up, it ends up working out, then I will say as much. But until then, I am pretty vehemently against it. I, I will say this one thing, though. Someone had brought this up to me earlier today. Do you think – the what about the possibility of him – not that I know you wouldn't give a shit, and I, I don't really even care either – the possibility of Shane running Ring of Honor. What if they appoint him Ring of Honor? And on Honor Club, who gives a fuck? Like, in its current state, no one really cares about Ring of Honor. Their last pay-per-view is awesome. But, like, the weekly TVs are not worth watching at all. Um, If they were to get it on TV, maybe, and he can kind of give him the reins to Ring of Honor to make that his own thing, maybe. But even then, I'm not overly optimistic. But what are your thoughts on that? I'm so out on that. I'm (laughs) Like, why? I just don't know why. Like, maybe he wants to run a wrestling promotion again. I don't know. Call his brother in law. I'm going to tell you. Is he still alive? Oh, you're yeah. talking about. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about. I'm thinking Vince's brother. Vince's brother, I think, had passed away at one point. No, I'm talking about his wife's, his wife's of course. husband. Yeah. Hey, listen. His, I, sister's, his sister's husband. No, they brought him in for Mania last year, and that was enough of a favor because that was a fucking disaster. When that when that music hit at Mania last year when we were there, it was terrible. Like people were reacting like, oh, it's Shane, it's Shane. And I'm like, why are people going crazy for this? We just saw this guy a year ago in the Rumble and he looked awful. 
Like, why is it such a big deal that he's back facing the Miz again? Oh, yeah, if I'm sure you want nuts on your couch. Just crazy. No, thanks. That's a hard pass for me. Um, but as we talk about SummerSlam coming up on Saturday, a couple matches that will not be a part of the show. They're kind of extending the event through SmackDown and Raw um, this coming Friday and the following Monday. So three matches that you would think could be on the show are going to be happening on TV instead. Now, they are having a three-hour pre-show. Um, that is fucking ridiculous. But I know it's all like talking. I, I get it. I I will be there. I don't even know if I'll be at the building at that point when that starts. That just sounds crazy. But um, no matches on the pre-show as of right now. The pre-show is kind of smacked down the night before, also in Cleveland. So they're doing DIY and the Bloodline for the WWE Tag Team titles we found out last week via the gauntlet that the Bloodline won. And Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair getting their rematch for the WWE Women's Tag Team titles against Alba Fire and Isla Dawn, who are resurfacing and having their first match on television in a fucking month, month and a half. I know they were in NXT on Tuesday, but still, my God. Um, your thoughts on that match specifically uh, before we get to the Bloodline stuff. Do Bianca and Jade get the belts back, or do uh, Alba Fire and Isla Dawn find a way to retain? Yeah, keep... <laughs> if they're not going to be on TV, I mean, you might as well take the belts off. Them. Exactly. going to flip them correctly. Yeah. Uh, I would keep the belts on... On uh, fire and die, maybe we can start getting some tease tension between Jade and and Bianca. I just want Bianca and Jade to get the belts back, so we. Can, I I don't know. I it just it feels like I know you said let's get fire and dawn on TV more, but like the issue is to defend against what teams. I mean they have teams. I understand that, but like Candice and into your heels. I think Damage Control are baby faces now. I have no idea. Like I think they are. They came back on Monday to a. Uh, flat reaction because no one even really knew they were gone and i think they're supposed to be heels or baby faces now i, I have no idea i i think jade and bianca are getting the belts back um maybe not right now i think the match might end in a dq because i had seen something with blair davenport linking up with uh, dawn and fire backstage i could see her maybe getting involved or helping them win in some form or fashion i don't see alba fire isla dawn pinning bianca or jade right do you think it might be a dq or something like that sounds about right i doubt they're gonna beat them like Clean. I can't imagine Isla Dawn pins Jade Cargill, for example. It could happen. <laughs> that would be ridiculous. Um, <laughs> but for the other match, Bloodline, Jacob fought too specifically in Tamatanga. Tonga Loa had an eye injury. I don't know if it's legit or a storyline thing. I don't know. But Jacob fought too took his spot in the gauntlet match on SmackDown last week. They are the new number one contenders to the WWE Tag Team titles, facing DIY in Johnny Gargano's native Cleveland. So, Johnny's been talking all year. Oh, yeah, SummerSlam in Cleveland. Can't wait to be a part of the show. Jack not only, Lewis. Yeah, seriously. Can't, can't wait to, to not be a part of the show, for one thing. He will not be a part of SummerSlam unless something happens. This match is on SmackDown. He will be in Cleveland defending the championship after a month-long run, probably dropping it here. I mean, this is a guaranteed loss for DIY, right? Easily. I, I think we're getting new WWE Tag Team Champions, which I hate to say, and I love Fatu and Tamatanga, and I think they're a good team. But the, why why even bother at that point? I mean, I think they just wanted to give DIY their moment in Toronto, but a month-long run is just, that's just nasty stuff. Yeah, I mean, realistically, you should just have them, if, they, if you're going to put the belts on Tonga and, and Jacob Fatu, you should just have them beat Theory and, and Waller for him. Yeah, and then maybe DIY beats them. I just, what was, why, why do you need to put the belts, the tag titles on them this soon? To tease the possibility of Bloodline having more gold if Solo Sokoa becomes champion at SummerSlam, which he's not. Um, but do you think that's why they're doing this? I don't understand why they're rushing into this so quickly. Um, I mean, I feel like you can kind of like go into the story so they're like a better tag team than the Usos maybe. I don't know. You can kind of feed that in there like, well, we held the belts for X. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's just It just feels sacrilegious to me to have – awesome truth as tag team champions for like two or three months and then um they have multiple successful title defenses but diy can't even get a month as champions before they lose that immediately to uh, to the bloodline i don't know man that doesn't make a whole lot of sense um another match that will not be a part of the show on sunday but will rather be happening on raw the following monday the next night or two nights later rather is the wyatt six against chad gable and the creed brothers specifically it's going to be uh joe gacy Dexter Loomis and Eric Rowan, uh, Uncle Howdy slash Bo Dallas, will not be a part of the match physically, maybe at ringside. Um, but yeah, I thought they would do that match at SummerSlam. They are not. They are doing it on Raw the following Monday. So we haven't really talked a whole lot about the Wide Six stuff lately, 
Um, where is it for you right now? Are you completely out on it? Is it okay? Are you enjoying it? And your thoughts on that match coming up on Monday? It's been good. I mean, I think this this week on Raw, we probably got the best, like, the best of it so far. They all reveal themselves. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we knew who it was. Um, no, I mean, I think it's it was kind of dragging a little bit, but I, I think now it's, I, I'm, I, I like where it's going right now. I mean, like I said, if it took a little bit longer, maybe I'd be like, all right, let's speed this shit up. But mm-hmm. I think uh, what they did on Raw was good, and I had no complaints on that end. Yeah, I think the reveal was well done. And uh, my biggest criticism for a while when we first talked about the why it's sick, why it's sick stuff was when are they getting in the ring? Like, I, I've really enjoyed a lot of what we've gotten so far. Some of the vignettes in recent weeks have not been great because they just really haven't given us much in the way of new information. But um, the segments themselves with Gable and the Creeds have been well done and the people are still into it. But my question always was, like, when are they going to wrestle? Because they can't be doing this shit for six months like they were trying to do with Bray Wyatt and the Fiend stuff, and he didn't really wrestle all that often. I don't know how often these folks are going to wrestle, but um, they're wrestling on Monday, and I think it's an easy win for them, right? Yeah. I would think so. They, they probably should not lose their first match um, as a group. So that's coming up on Monday. SummerSlam on Saturday, though, the main card. Um, I don't know what it starts with, but we'll start here. Intercontinental Championship. Sami Zayn, Braun Breaker. Um, who goes over here amongst the two of them? And this is a rematch from Money in the Bank. Sami Zayn won the first one. The Sami Zayn does, does lightning strike twice. I think it's a pretty, you know, uh, slam dunk pick to have Braun Breaker become champion, though, right? I think Breaker wins here. Um, him not winning at Money in the Bank, which I feel like, I don't know if we said he could win, but like it felt like he had a good chance to win. Uh, but, I mean, I think he's got to win here. I think he has to, too. I mean, he won. He lost clean at Money in the Bank, which I wasn't in love with, and I know you weren't either. But at least it's like, okay, you know, he had a great showing. It was a really fun match. Um, they definitely need to have Braun Breaker win decisively here and have Sami Zayn move on to whatever he's doing next with the bloodline or whatever. But I think the Intercontinental title is the logical next step for Braun Breaker if they really wanted to be, like, one of the guys on Raw going forward, would you not think? No, I think that's the right direction to go in. I think you also have Ilya Dragunov waiting in the wings. I know we've seen him in Breaker a lot lately, but you have him. Jay Uso can get a shot at some point against Braun. Uh, Sheamus, they can go back to that at some point. Maybe it's even Sheamus who gets the belt from Braun Breaker because he's always wanted to be the Intercontinental Champion. Uh, there's a, a number of people from the uh, Raw roster right now that he can defend against. No shortage of potential opponents, so I'm, I'm liking the idea of Braun Breaker becoming champion here. Um, the other mid-card championship in a uh, rare instance, is on uh, being defended on the show at SummerSlam. Logan Paul, LA Knight, for the United States title. Um, the match I thought we were going to get at WrestleMania, that we probably should have gotten at WrestleMania. Now, the interesting thing about this match is that I would say LA Knight has got to win, and I don't think he is, though. I think they've given LA Knight a lot against Logan Paul lately. He pinned Logan Paul on SmackDown and MSG a month ago. He's probably going to ruin his homecoming uh, coming up on SmackDown this Friday in Cleveland. I think they might have Logan Paul retain, and they will build the LA Knight winning the belt, but it may not be on Saturday. It might be a bash in Berlin or another time, which I think is a mistake. Just pull the trigger now. I feel like it's been way too long. But what's your uh, take on this matchup between Paul and LA Knight? Yeah, I think I think LA Knight should win. Now you got me worried that he's not going to. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, he has gotten a lot against Paul, but I still feel like they just need to rip the bandaid off. I, mean, I agree. I, I think Paul... I think Gally should be should be champion. He should have been champion a while ago, and I mean, this is the right opportunity to do it. I don't know what the, what's what's holding them back from doing it. Do you think it just might be a case of Triple H has been known for during his time as the head of creative for dragging things out in chase mode? It's all about the chase, brother. Like all this other sort of stuff. I just feel like in this case, it has been long enough. It's not really even a night issue because it's not like we, we've talked before. Like if this person doesn't win here, they're a fucking loser. Even if they win it in six months from now, I don't care. They've lost enough. Knight hasn't lost that many matches. He has lost some big high profile matches this year and late last year. But this isn't a case where if he loses, he's done. I just think it's a case of I don't really see the value in keeping the belt on Logan Paul for another four weeks, two months, if the end result is going to be the same with LA Knight becoming champion. Like you said, they just got to rip the Band-Aid off here. Yeah, I mean, I think, like you said, I think it's been long enough. I don't think holding out is going to really add too much more to it. Just put the fucking belt on him. I mean, the Roman Reigns stuff was bad enough when he was champion. He wasn't really defending it after a while. 
But I mean, this man has been champion since November, November 2nd. It will be almost exactly nine fucking months, dude, since he won the championship at Crown Jewel. It was like November 2nd or 3rd, I think. And it's going to be August 3rd on Saturday when he has this match with LA Knight. That is just, that's criminal. And I like Logan Paul's run, but I really think the certain things, timing is everything. You don't want to have someone hold the championship for too long. You don't want to have someone hold the championship for too short. Um, it's definitely been too long. I feel like the time and place for this match was at Mania and LA Knight. I mean, he's still extremely popular, obviously. But maybe they just did that to get AJ Styles on the show in a logical match. I still don't know why they didn't do this at Mania. Um, but I, I still think it would be a dumb decision to not have LA Knight become champion here because it's definitely time. So he, it, it's time for him to be crowned so he can move on higher up the card at some point down the road. I mean, the guy's not getting any younger. Let's put it that way. Bailey Nia Jax, WWE Women's Championship. Uh, no shortage of history between these two from NXT to Raw to now on SmackDown. bailey has been champion since Mania. Nia Jax won the Queen of the Ring to earn this opportunity. You know, I'm, I'm sticking with my pick of Nia. But uh, I, I don't really know is I don't I'm not as confident now now that Nia pinned Bailey in that tag team match on SmackDown last week. She could have pinned Meechin. She didn't. She pinned Bailey. So I that might have been done for a reason to make you think Nia will win or won't win. I don't know. But uh, again, what's your analysis of this one? Bailey Nia Jax WWE Women's Title. This is a tough one. I feel like we've had so many people winning and losing the belt that I'm leaning towards Bailey. Maybe something with Tiffany and she just. Nia doesn't win. Mm-hmm. I just, ugh, it's. I'm gonna say Bailey. Like I said, I feel like we have a ton of people losing their belt, or other people I can see losing their belt. So I'm gonna go with Bailey. Bailey. Okay. All right. So if Bailey retains here, you still have the X factor of Tiffany Stratton as Miss Money in the Bank. Does she get involved? Does she attempt to cash in? Does she cash in? Do we get a repeat of last year? Or Io Sky cashed in on the new champion of Bianca. I mean, in that case, you're picking Bailey, so it wouldn't be a new champion. But does Tiffany become champion on the show, or do they hold off on that too? I would hold off on it. I would hold off on it too. I think it's too soon to have her cash in. I don't think she needs to cash in. Cash in. I don't think she should cash in. If she does, it would be a great moment. But I think you can afford to have someone like a Tiffany uh, hold the briefcase for more than a month. Io Sky's run as Miss Money the Bank was fine, but. We need a longer running Miss Money in the Bank for a change for the first time since Carmella. And I think Tiffany can be that person and she can benefit from probably getting her own briefcase. I would be surprised like on Friday, Nia Jax teased getting Tiffany her own customized briefcase. So if she does that, then uh, she's not cashing that thing in anytime soon. They're going to want to make the most of that and probably sell it on WWE Shop for like 200 bucks. So uh, I got Nia Jax winning, but uh, you got Bailey retaining the championship. Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley for the Women's World Championship. I think they've done a great job with the storyline. Um, the Dominic, will he, won't he leave Rhea to join Liv and vice versa? Uh, I, I won't give my pick. Uh, I won't give my prediction for this one. I'll throw it to you first. Morgan and Ripley, who walks out Women's World Champion? I think Belt. Yeah, I think Belt stays with 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 uh, Liv. Uh, okay. Like I said, I think we have a ton of people losing the belt. I think the story, like I said. Dom, I assume Dom's going to side with Liv, so I think she'd keep the belt. Um, and, yeah, and Rhea's going to go babyface, so, yeah. Is it a case of Dom just flat out turning on her here, or do you save that for another time, or is it just like an accidental thing? I thought it was an accidental thing for a while. I got Liv Morgan retaining, too. I mean, there's no reason to give the belt back to Rhea this soon. Uh, she just came back. Liv's been champion since May. Give her a little bit of a longer run. I think Dominic's going to turn on Rhea here. I, I think what gave it away was that segment on Raw a few weeks ago where he went off on Liv. I don't think they do that unless he's joining Liv, and I think it's going to be like the major, you know, uh, Christian, Tristratus, makeout sort of thing from uh, WrestleMania 20. I think we get that yeah. here on the show. No, oh, yeah, I agree. So I think Liv Morgan retains. Rhea Ripley probably gets the belt back at some point down the road. I mean, you could drag this until bad blood, maybe even do a women's hell in the cell match, which we haven't seen in, uh, I think since Becky and Sasha. Oh no, I'm sorry. We had one with Bailey and Sasha's. I, that's, that's not true either. We had one in 2021 with, um, Bianca and Bailey. So that was the last women's cell match. Cause we don't have the hell in the cell pay-per-view anymore, but you could do that inside the cell. If you want to blow it off there. Um, let's see, let's go, uh, Damien Priest Gunther world heavyweight championship. 
Uh, I think this will be a really good match. Before I even get to the prediction, what have your thoughts been on the build and how they've really turned around on Damian Priest and uh, kind of getting him over as a babyface, sympathetic. He's cut some great promos. They've gotten me way more excited for this match than it was even a month ago. Yeah, they've done a good job, I think. Like you just mentioned, I think they've done a good job of Priest. Definitely interest made my interest in this match a lot better. I think we both thought Rollins would win at Money in the Bank just because him and, and Goot, there would be a sexier match. I still think it would be, but I think they built up Damien enough that I think this is a credible uh, SummerSlam match. So I think I give him a, a, a applause for how they built up Priest over the last month. The way they built him up, though, does have me second-guessing my pick of Gunther winning the championship. Do you think they could have built Priest up enough to where they could afford to have Gunther lose, only for him to win it? Again, it goes back to the night thing. Why delay the inevitable? But maybe they want to do it in Germany. Is there a chance that Priest wins here? I feel like there's a pretty decent chance. There's a chance, but it shouldn't happen. Do you think... Well, here's my logic. If Gunther loses here, it doesn't ruin him, obviously. He will become champion. But if they just haven't win it in Scot or not Scotland, uh, I'm looking at the Wikipedia here, Clash of the Castle, Scotland. If they haven't win it at Germany, um, wouldn't Priest be booed? So it kind of defeats the purpose of turning him face and kind of endearing him to the audience. I feel like they should just get it over with, like you said, and have Gunther just become champion. Yeah, I mean, Gunther's only lost one time on the main roster. I don't know why you just start stacking him up at this point. I think it's like I said, there's no reason to do it. Like, don't need a swerve. Let's just put the belt on the guy. It's not that hard. Does he win it clean, or does he was it, does he win it out of uh, in, interference or inadvertent interference from the Judgment Day's Balor, who's been teasing tension with Priest, that is, and everyone else in the group? I, I would prefer to see Gunther win it clean just because he won every other of his matches clean as Intercontinental Champion, so why start you know doing things differently now? Yeah, I prefer clean. I just feel like that would make the most sense. Um, we'll go Punk and McIntyre next, because I do think Cody and Solo is the main event. Punk McIntyre, Seth Rollins is the special guest referee Interesting matchup here. Punk's first singles match in 10-plus uh, years. First singles televised match. I mean, he had a singles match on the house show about a year ago. Um, MSG right around Christmas time. But beyond that, he has not wrestled on TV for WWE singles match since January 2014 when he faced Billy Gunn on Raw right before the Rumble, which is wild to think about. Um, does Punk, can he lose his first uh, singles match in a decade, Mr. Marceau, or is this a must-win situation for him? He can lose, and he's going to lose. Drew, LOL. I mean, Drew kind of has to win, right? If Drew doesn't win, he's a fucking loser. I mean, I, people are saying, oh, Punk's got to win. It's his first match in a decade. But you got to remember, with Drew, like, he was fucked over by Punk in Mania at uh, Clash of the Castle, at Money in the Bank. Money in the Bank. He needs to win. This is a more of a must-win situation for him than it is for Punk. Would you agree with that? A thousand percent. Does he... Is, I don't think they do a Cena-Brock scenario, right, if Rollins is the referee? How do you? How would no, you do it? there'll be some kind of shenanigans with Rollins. I don't think you'll do a Brock Cena. I don't want interference in all these matches. I'm, I'm saying a lot of interference for a lot of these matches. Like I know Logan Paul is going to have interference from those fucking goofs in his uh, entourage that he typically has interfere. So I wouldn't go overboard with interference on the show. But in this match specifically uh, with Drew, do you think Rollins will you know, probably accidentally hit Punk and that will cost uh, him the win and give Drew the victory? Yeah. Maybe do a triple threat of Bash in Berlin. Maybe. Yeah, I'm down. That'd probably be the way to go. Main event, Cody Rhodes, what will probably be the main event, under the premise that Roman Reigns returns. Cody Rhodes, solo, undisputed WWE championship. Cody Rhodes wins, LOL. Cody wins, LOL. Does Roman return, LOL? Uh, yes. I think he... D d let me ask you this. Does he have to return? Yeah, yes. I don't think he does. I mean, if this main events, he does. But if it doesn't main event, I don't give a fuck about Cody and Solo one-on-one -on -one without Roman returning afterward. But if it doesn't main event, I don't really think he needs to return. I think they can afford to get away with the Solo-led bloodline for a little bit longer. But that being said, I would pull the trigger here. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm so down, it's not funny. Yeah, I feel like predictability with this is the way to go. Cody wins, clean. Roman comes out, kicks off his next chapter. And then maybe Orton comes out. Maybe not at SummerSlam, but... Uh, on the subsequent SmackDown, blaming Cody for uh, him getting attacked by the bloodline and laid out. There's a lot of different directions you can go in there. Uh, even if it is predictable, that's the way that it would go. It would make for the most compelling direction going forward on the SmackDown side of things. That's going to do it, Mr. Morceau, for SummerSlam on Saturday. Uh, you mentioned it earlier, but just overall expectation for the show, I think it should be a good one. It should, no, I'm, I'm excited. I think it'll be a good, fun show, and 
I hope you have a good time. I appreciate it. I'll also give you updates uh, from the old Rock and Roll City. Uh, we might go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but that's not confirmed. We'll see. Everything's always uh, up in the air. But enjoy the weekend, Mr. Marcel. I'll get your rest next week. Uh, I'll talk to you, man. Peace, brother. Join Graham, GSM Matthews, and RJ Marceau every Thursday as they run down their weekly wrestling rants, offer expert analysis, host exclusive interviews, and more. Subscribe today on all your favorite podcast platforms and never miss an episode of Wrestle Rant Radio. Wrestle Rant Radio.